We have a pretty brutal hike into camp here. We brought all the provisions we need for a week. And uh, we're about three and a half miles in here and about 3,500 vertical feet. Prime elk country, we've scouted this pretty heavily uh, during the summer. Saw some great bulls here. There's some bulls in the 350 caliber, which if anybody knows that hunts Colorado, that's a great bull. Really great bull for anywhere, but for Colorado, it's saying something. So. Have my brother Troy here to help out. He's got a tag as well. My good friend Ray Kemper, and pro staffer with Sportsman's News. So, got a few days here. Should be a great trip. There you go, first morning of hunting right there. I like my shit to go good. I even sleep in it. <laughs> First morning of the hunt here in Colorado. We got my brother up on as a shooter, and uh, lo and behold, I just counted 102 elk in that group. Two bulls. One's about a 3 for 40 bull. We've been watching some pretty big bulls in here, some 360, 370 class bulls. These younger guys have got these cows all herded up. We're, we're trying to find the big boys. So. We're gonna let them walk, especially since it's day one. Go try and find a 360 to kill. We interrupt this elk hunt <laughs> to bring you my I'm new nephew up here with my brother. His wife is pregnant, not due for another three weeks yet, and obviously very limited service up here in the back country. And lo and behold, we get up where we get service this morning. His wife Emily is getting her epidural and uh, Aloysius is on his way, so I guess we're just going to elk hunt. <laughs> elk hunt and sheep country, you gotta love it.
basically yesterday. All we did was figure out the terrain a little bit better. We've scouted it, but things have changed a little bit now. During the their summer, these bulls and cows are way up high in the alpine areas, but then as they rub out, they move down here into the trees. So we saw this bull come out last night, and we knew he was okay, really not what we wanted, but we didn't know what would join up with him. It's September 2nd. You know, you never know what day the rut's gonna get kicked in, so we heard this bull bugling up on the ridge, saw him, made a mad dash for him, and I actually pinned this bull perfect. We had a 45-yard shot on him. I stopped him in the opening there, and Troy's really good at that range, so Troy's never killed a bull with his bow, and that says a lot to walk away from a bull like that. And then we had that other little five point here, 20, 25 yards. A lot of people think we're crazy. Any bull you kill with a bow is a great bull, but you know what, we got 12 days here and we're gonna give it a, it's um, pretty exciting to be that close to bulls. He's screaming, he's just getting started. So it should be a good couple of weeks. Well, we've been in here out in three days now. We've had some real close encounters. We've passed on some bulls, but our preseason scouting told us that there's some bulls in that 350 caliber here, which is what we're trying to do. We both had two weeks to pull this off, and uh, so far we haven't even seen them yet. They've rubbed out, they're in the trees. So we're gonna go back to town, run our business for a day, collect up some provisions, come back up tomorrow and uh, see if we can get one of these 350 class bulls that we uh, we saw during our scouting. Well, we're in the back country of Colorado here. This is our uh, second venture into here. We were in here for four days, the beginning of season, and uh, came with my buddy Ray Kemper. He had a bear tag. And so we went back out to run our companies and make some phone calls, do some business. We're coming back in, we had empty packs, so we brought some pretty eccentric food. We've got some pork tenderloins, jalapeno cheddar sausages. You know, it even brought a bag of wine in here. So to enjoy after we get our, uh, our big bull elk on the ground. But one thing's important when you're hunting this high country in the back country, you know, whether you bring eccentric food like this or not, whether you bring outdoor trails, mountain house, different dehydrated foods, make sure you keep your energy level up and that means stopping and eating force yourself to eat on a regular basis you'll find is the more you're in the woods you know what hiking up these steep hills pretty soon you're going 30 40 yards instead of 100 200 yards and a lot of that is because your, your nutrition level has dropped so a lot of nuts a lot of dried fruit just make sure you're eating frequently and sustain you know basically with your energy level up and you're able to keep after those elk if you're able to do that, you can do this nine or 10 days and it improves your chance of success every time. Storm is rolling in, so we pitch the other tent. Looks like we're gonna get stuck up here. I don't know, for a few hours, maybe for the night. We'll see, it's kinda ugly. We can't get a break on this hunt, so hopefully we're rewarded with something pretty awesome in the end. That's all we can hope for. of elk, lots of options, but right now the best option is to sit here and watch because every, there's an elk blocking every one of our approaches to a good bull. We could go down here and just kill an elk, I'm sure, but we want a big elk. That's why we're up here. I mean, it's 3,500 vertical feet. We've been up here three times already. Just gonna have to hold out. We've still got five days. We'll try to be patient. Hopefully we'll get a break. camped up here at about 12,500 feet last night. It literally poured on us all night long. Thank goodness we had a great tent. And uh, it's supposed to rain today, it's supposed to rain tomorrow. We just can't get a break on this hunt. So we're gonna try and find one of our big boys, either Rudy or Pretty Boy or High Top, one of these guys. Hopefully we get a break today. It's gonna be a good one.
Now we just need to get a break. We're going to break down camp here in a few minutes. See if he comes back out. We'll break down camp, move it a little bit closer. Hopefully our wind holds and we can get a break tonight when he comes out. There's a lot of good bulls in here, but he's a giant. Well, we're committed now. We're about to drop off into this hole. We're gonna go chase Brutus around. This bull's a giant. We need a little break here. We haven't had one so far, but hopefully this is it. We found both of Troy's arrows and uh, just missed, just shot underneath him it looks like. And the other one he ran out of ways, I stopped the bull and uh, Troy didn't have time to range him. We just saw him walk off, you know everything is good, he showed no signs of hit and the arrow shows no signs of hit. So. start bugling and cow calling and lo and behold they run 500 yards off the hill so I put Troy in position the chances of this coming together are like almost nil but you just never know we'll see what happens
Here's one way wrong with that scenario. Troy did exactly what I told him to do, but having intuition and knowing what help do makes a big difference. That hill was open there. If I would have been in that spot, I would have immediately started working up on there. We could hear that bull bugling. You should have utilized that opportunity to get higher on the hill. If that was the case, he'd have been 80 yards higher on the hill and laid over there in those bushes. He would have had a good shot at that bull. Granted, he's not the biggest bull on the mountain, nowhere near big as the bull we call Brutus that we wanted to try to get killed and get a shot at him at 20 yards and missed. But this is all about getting experience elk hunting, and it's kind of tough up there in this alpine area, so. So if I wanted to kill this bull right now and self-film it, what I would do is I would move up to that next tree in front of me. I'd wide angle this, and then I'd wait for the shot. I could get this done. That bull's gonna come right up the hill there, but we're waiting for a bigger bull. We don't wanna shoot him. We got bulls everywhere and we want the big one. So we're just gonna call this guy up to the camera and show you what it looks like. Public land, DIY, baby. You know, it goes to show you, you don't always have to kill something to have a great time. I think it was pretty obvious by the video that we could have killed numerous bulls here with our bow. Troy got a chance at one of the giants we came here to hunt. There was basically three bulls here in the backcountry that I really wanted to put my tag on. And it was either that or go home. And unfortunately, I'm out of time. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Sportsman's News Television. I know I sure enjoyed bringing it to you and spending this great quality time with my brother. Tune in next month. We'll have another great show for you. Sportsman's News Television is brought to you by Vortex Optics, the force of optics. Sitka, turning clothing into gear. CVA, it's just a better gun. Bushnell Trophy Cams, bulletproof reliability for life. Double Tap Ammunition, handcrafted, American-made precision ammunition. St. Croix Fishing Rods, the best rods on earth. And by Jumping Jack, from trailer to tent in five minutes.